good evening students how are you doing good evening all good yes we'll continue from where we stopped last class oh just a second just a second guys so i think we have finished last class we have finished uh, bohr's model right we have seen few questions also on this correct dbp solution shreyas has been shared on the group you check no uh, the dbp there is given no this below that only there is a solution a pdf it's there only could you check now tell me shreyas no 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 in that solution for all the dbp the solution are given you can check you scroll down you will get it okay even for the coming classes yeah even for the coming classes that the dbp i'll share the solution is that in that folder only in that pdf only so solution i have shared once okay it is for all the dbp that we are going to share in the coming classes okay yeah so guys last class uh, last class we have discussed bohr atomic model a very important uh, you know uh, atomic model we have and from this you will definitely going to get the questions okay that's good if you receive the book today okay fine so what have we discussed a quick recap of it so that we can you know uh, uh, understand just you know to continue from the bohr's model yeah yeah advik at balmer series and all we'll do it today 
Okay, we'll do it today. Then you can again attempt those questions. Okay. So, yes, we'll discuss it today. Just a second. Yes, yes, yes. We'll discuss it today only. Spectrum. Correct. So, what have we discussed? We have discussed that Bohr atomic model. Bohr suggests that uh, you know there are energy levels present within an atom. Okay, there are energy level presence within an atom, an electron resides in this energy level. This energy level, we call it as orbit, right? So there are infinite number of orbit that we have discussed last class. Okay, infinite number of orbits present like this. Okay, so a nucleus. Right, and these are the orbits 1, 2, 3, 4, K, L, M, N, infinite number of orbits. Correct. And we have also discussed these energy levels has certain amount of energy and that energy if I write down in any orbit, suppose nth orbit, the energy is given by the formula we have seen and that formula is negative of 2 pi square z square e to the power 4 me divided by n square h square. This is the formula of energy. You see this energy E is directly proportional to z square by n square and this is what we have discussed last class. Okay. Now two, three, no, um, conclusion of this Bohr atomic model. The first one important also write down if you look at the energy as you go away from the nucleus, right? So as we go away from the nucleus, the energy means total energy total energy increases. Okay, total energy increases. Right, you see this for an atom, this uh, Z value will be same, but as you go away from the nucleus, N is increasing and total energy is negative so overall, the energy is increasing over here because N is increasing, correct? So energy increases. So what we can say, E1, the energy in the first orbit is lesser than the energy in the second orbit, then third, fourth, and so on, correct? Okay. The point or the orbit where the energy of the electron becomes zero, at that point of time, the electron is said to be, said not to be the part of the atom. Okay, so write down the next point here. At infinity, at infinity, the total energy of an electron energy of an electron E equals to zero and and the electron 
electron is no longer no longer the part of an atom no longer the part of an atom yes yes you can say that when you take the electron out of an atom the atom is called to be ionized clear yeah, this is one point now the second point is if you look at the difference in the energy e2 minus e1 this energy is found to be this difference is found to be more than e3 minus e2 then e4 minus e3 and so on the consecutive difference in energy decreases as we go away from the nucleus no the total energy is negative himanshu so when n increases it becomes less and less negative hence more value will be more clear this is the two points you must uh, you know take care of Now you see, since we know there are energy levels present, so if you find out the change in the energy delta E, okay. So write down the calculation of of difference in energy or energy difference. now these parts goes mathematical okay it is all about mathematics here so there is nothing you know like theory or or you know any uh, you know logic or information that you should have extra to understand this just mathematics okay so we need to find out the difference in energy and we know the energy in one particular orbit so delta e will subtract and we will find out okay so suppose the transition of electron right suppose a transition of electron takes place uh i'll write down here i am assuming the transition of electron from ni to just a second electron from ni to nf ni stands for initial orbit nf is for final right so we have nf is greater than ni we are assuming means higher energy level the electron is jumping right so the electron is jumping into higher energy level so the difference in energy here you see okay so delta e delta e is energy in the final orbit ef minus ei correct ef minus ei final orbit the energy in the final orbit that is corresponding to nf corresponding to ni and we know the formula of e just now i have written over there okay you see this one more thing i'll just show you here uh this formula i have written right this formula we are going to use where n is the difference here all these things are same and what happens suppose if the energy if the electron 
goes from lower to higher energy level. Just for an example, suppose the electron jumps from here to here. Just a second. Right, from the first orbit to any higher orbit like this, if it jumps. So we know there's the energy difference. So it takes energy from outside and jumps to the higher energy level. So electrons were here and was here and it is now in this orbit, the next higher energy orbit, right? So this difference in energy, this difference in energy is delta E. That is what we are calculating. Difference in the energy of these two orbitals orbit sorry this difference is delta e and that is equals to ef minus ei okay now suppose in the next step what happens this electron comes back again to the lower energy level this energy level. it jumps from high to low then obviously this amount of energy it has to release then only it has to it will come to this energy level right so in this process, what happens, it radiates some radiation. It emits some radiation of some particular wavelength. Obviously, when radiation comes out, we'll have a particular wavelength of this radiation. And corresponding to this wavelength, we'll have the energy. And that energy is Hc by lambda, corresponding to this wavelength. right? And this energy difference, we know, this energy difference is delta E only. So delta E is equals to Hc by lambda. When the electron jumps to high to low energy level, radiation comes out, energy comes out in the form of radiation and corresponding to that wavelength will have the energy, that energy is delta E at C by lambda. So this is the energy emits or absorbs, both way you can say, the same amount of energy it has to absorb and then it will jump to this level. The same amount of energy it has to release and comes down to the original energy state, correct? Ah, that also we can use Anurag, not an issue. We can use that. Okay. I'm just trying to get one expression over here. That's why I'm using this formula. You can use that also. That's not an issue. Valid. Okay. Delta E is what? You see, I'll show you. Here. What is delta E? EF minus EI. EF is more than EI. Right. If you take the negative sign. Delta E is what? Minus negative of something, minus minus plus negative of something. Magnitude wide, if you see, magnitude wise, if you see, the energy decreases. Overall energy increases because it is negative. No, 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 it's not. Look at the expression last class we have derived for total for change in energy. Delta E will be positive. No, energy increases. That's what I have given you the first point. Sir, but over here, you'll get minus EF minus minus EI, sir, and if, if EF is greater, then shouldn't it be negative? Delta E should be negative. But right? see, magnitude is less. See, you're not getting it. One and two. Fine. So magnitude, if you see, mod of E1. Mod of E1 is greater than mod of E2. Magnitude is this. But since the total energy is negative, it is negative. So if you see the negative, see the energy here which includes the sign then it will be e1 is less than e2 because it is negative so suppose if i take this example see this one e is equals to what formula we can write minus 13.6 z square by n square electron volt per atom correct now when n increases then this entire value decreases or increases So 
will do the question also wait increase if n increases then the entire value the magnitude decreases but since we have a negative sign so total energy increases correct yeah that's what i have said that e1 e2 e3 increases simple that is what last class also we have discussed that here the electron in this orbit the electron is bonded actually with the nucleus okay and it is actually the energy suppose you have to the electron is present at infinite distance suppose here where the energy is zero it is free at infinite distance now this electron suppose it is present in the orbit so you have to place this electron here so you need to supply energy to this electron so that it will come into this orbit so this energy is getting stored into the electron like this so it is the work done that we do on this electron to be to you know to place this electron in this orbit that's why it is negative again you see here we have negative energy and if you want to take this electron out what you have to do you have to provide energy from outside some positive energy you have to give so when this positive negative cancels out each other completely this is the position of infinite this position we have where the electron is free and this is the energy required for this yes that's what that is that is what the result we got from bohr's atomic model that is the significance of negative energy why electron has negative energy in an orbit we are providing energy it means what we are adding energy into it so plus and minus are cancelling out each other if they cancel out completely electrons free they will come out from the surface right so the total energy which is negative it is a mathematical thing right <coughs> it is a mathematical thing yes ionizational energy we can understand with this but that is defined for gases not for solid that is the difference here ionizational energy is defined for gas no we'll have this formula we'll see what is delta e will get it's not like ef and ei will substitute with psi total energy we'll see what we'll get can i move on ionization energy will discuss in the in next chapter let it be okay you cannot understand everything over here we'll discuss it's simple one definition we have okay it is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from an isolated gaseous atom that is it the energy that you provide to an isolated gaseous atom to remove an electron that is ionization energy right but definition won't help you there are other things that you need to understand okay we'll discuss that in next chapter periodic properties did you get it can i move on okay just a second okay can say that that is the you no know, that is the threshold state we have means that is the uh, transition state from that particular point the electron is free to move from the uh, this thing at infinite distance also it is free to move free from the attraction of nucleus that is a better way to say at infinite distance the electrons are free from the attraction of the nucleus <clears throat> okay 
okay can you proceed now right so we are trying to find out delta e the energy difference ef minus ei ef minus ei the formula we have i'll just write down the formula that i have written in the previous page same thing just n you substitute with nf and ni so we get here <clears throat> negative of 2 pi square m e e to the power 4 z square by n f square minus minus 2 pi square m e e to the power 4 z square n i square close the bracket you see the magnitude this magnitude is more than this minus minus becomes positive so delta e you always get positive here right so the expression we get here is i'll take this 2 pi square square m e e to the power 4 e to the power 4 h square i have missed no i have missed h square here h square and h square divided by h square if i take this as common into z square open bracket 1 by nf square minus 1 by ni square Oh, is it Ni minus Nf square? So 1 by Ni square minus 1 by Nf square. Right? This one From here to this, including this, that is called this one. This is a constant, if you see, for an atom. For an atom, this expression is a constant, right? And this constant, we call it as Rydberg constant. R, Y, D, B, E, R, G. Rydberg constant. Represented by R. <clears throat> Okay, so delta E is equals to R times 1 by Ni square minus 1 by Nf square. Oh, just a second, just a second. I missed one thing here. Just a second. Delta E, we did not take into the consideration. No, don't write. Just a second. Yes. Nothing is wrong, but one change will do. Okay, this side I forgot to write here. This is the okay. So we get this. Z square, Ni square by Nf square. What I missed here is this delta E I have already explained. It is HC by lambda. Okay. So now I'll write to the next page. HC by lambda is equals to or 1 by lambda if I write down. 1 by lambda is equals to HC will multiply this side. Okay. So 1 by lambda is equals to what we can write. 2 pi square me e to the power 4 z square divided by c h q c h q into 1 by n i square minus 1 by n f square okay now this constant is readable constant this one this is readable constant. 1 by lambda we should write here read bug constant 
okay so this is represented by r rydberg constant is r so 1 by lambda is equals to r 1 by n i square minus 1 by n f square what is r r is 2 pi square m e e to the power 4 z square divided by c times h q okay so for hydrogen you see what we can write if you consider the hydrogen atom for hydrogen z is equals to 1 if you substitute this one here this rydberg constant becomes rh for hydrogen that would be 2 pi square m e e to the power 4 z square divided by c h q yes it is for an atom r is this so rydberg constant r is equals to we can write finally r for hydrogen into h square okay 1 by lambda if you remember this is the wave number new bar right so final expression if i write down here the wave number new bar is equals to 1 by lambda is equals to r h z square into 1 by n i square minus 1 by n f no it's not shell number is there and terms written over there so for the hydrogen atom rydberg constant is rh for any other atom it is rh times z square finish yes all these are true for single electron system because all these are coming from bohr's model bohr's model is, is applicable for one electron system okay the value of rydberg constant is not required okay but if you want i can write down the value the r value is this is the value of rydberg constant yes so that's why the point the value is not required the value is not required they won't ask you to write down the value okay because it is different for different atoms so there is no any point of talking about the rydberg constant the value of that constant
Yes, it is R H bitten, right? Try this question. Wait, I will show you the question. Just try to stick with the formula, okay? Yes, yes, yes. You can write in the answer. In, see, when you see the question, there will be options. Now, I can tell you one thing. In 99% of the cases, you don't require the value of R. You can write your answer in terms of uh, R only, okay? You will have the option. You can understand it by, by looking at the question. Okay, so look at this question. Try this one. Could you write, a, write the answer in terms of angstrom? Always try to write it in terms of angstrom in, in the form of A into 10 to the power B. Always. Ten to the, one joule is 10 to the power 7 arg. Then 
6.6 into 10 to the power minus 7. 10 to the power 3 is the answer given. 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power 3, the answer is given. Could you check your calculation? Done? Got the answer? Okay, see, the energy of an electron in the second and third Bohr orbit of hydrogen atom is given. Okay, so what is given? First of all, the first step is to write down the data. E2. E2 is minus 5.42, 10 to the power minus 12. E3 is minus 2.41 into 10 to the power minus 12. You can see which one is more. Ideally, E3 should be more than E2, and that is what the value we have. Okay, we need to find out the wavelength emitted in this radiation. Means what? Wavelength comes out only when the electrons comes back to the lower energy level, from high to low, right? So obviously, the transition is what? The transition is E3 to E2. So delta E is equals to what we can write? E3 minus E2. Okay, which you can solve easily. E3 is this and E2 is this. So 5.42 minus 2.41, the value is um, 1, 0, then 3. So won't it be E2 minus E3 will be final minus initial, right? That we take when electron jumps from lower to higher energy level. It is what it is talking about. The wavelength that comes out, it means it is the high to low transition. Yes. Okay. Right. So when, when that's what I have discussed this, no? When wavelength comes out, then the transition is what? The transition should be this. I'll show you just a second. The transition should be high to low, then only the wavelength comes out. If you're considering this, then you have to, uh, you know, give the energy, you have to provide the energy to the electrons. So since in the question it is talking about the wavelength of the electron that comes, the wavelength of the radiation, so it means high to low transition we have. So E3 to E2, initial to final. Clear? No doubt? Yes, sir. Clear. 10 to the power minus 12 arg. How do we convert arg into joule? One joule is equal to 10 to the power 7 arg. So this, if you multiply by 10 to the power minus 7, it becomes joule. That's why you see this, you know, the conversion, the unit conversion is very important here in this chapter. This is the delta E. Now we can find out what we need to find out lambda. So delta E is equal to hc by lambda we can write. So lambda is equals to 3.01 10 to the power minus 19 divided by H value is 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 into C is 3 into 10 to the power 8. Sorry, this is 1 by lambda. No, Left hand side, we have 1 by lambda. Yes. Now you can solve this, you'll get the value of lambda. So lambda is equals to suppose 6.626. I am assuming this as 6.6. 34 and 8. So it is 10 to the power minus 26. 3 already we have. 3.01, I am assuming it as 3 into 10 to the power minus 19. So 
So depending upon the you know, data, you can take this approximation. Okay, obviously you see three and three will get canceled and this becomes 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus seven meter. Yes. And one angstrom is equals to 10 to the power minus seven, 10 meter. So 10 to the power minus seven meter is thousand angstrom, right? So this 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power three, sorry, not minus three, 10 to the power three angstrom answers. Any confusion in this, you can do like this. 10 to the power three angstrom is 10 to the power minus seven meter. So it is 6.6 .6 into this. So we'll multiply by 6.6, .6, both sides. So this is the answer in answer. Nothing much, just you need to know the formula and unit conversion you have to know. Then you can solve these kind of questions. Clear? No doubt? Okay. Now you see again, I'll take the reference of that energy level, that diagram. Suppose the electron jumps from this to this energy level. So how many different transition possible here? One of the transition is it comes from this to this first, from this to this, and then from this to this, and then from this to this. One, two, three transition possible. And in, each, in every transition, it will radiate some radiation, right? So these number of radiations are the different spectral lines, okay? Number of spectral lines, like this, correct? So one from this, we can say there are one possibility is this, from this to this, this to this, and this to this. Another possibility is what? From here, it will jump directly to this and this. Another two spectral lines. Another one, it jumped directly from here to here, one spectral line. All these possibilities are called the number of spectral lines in a given transition. Okay? So, obviously, when we have two to three, two to one, or four to one, you can do this and count. Yeah that how many spe such spectral lines possible. But when we have higher number of uh, you know, transitions, like from 10 to 2 if it is coming, then there are so many transitions possible and it is very difficult to calculate one by one manually. Right? So in that case, it's, the best way is what? Is to use a formula and that formula is I'll write down here. Yeah, there are many possibilities possible like this. So if they ask you the number of spectral lines, the possible transitions, number of spectral lines, the formula is, it is NF it is NI minus NF NI minus NF you can understand it this way. This is a number of spectral lines. So negative, it cannot be negative. And number of spectral lines you get when electron comes from high to low energy level. So it must be positive. So high means Ni, the initial orbit, right? So Ni minus Nf, then Ni minus Nf plus one divided by, this is the formula we have. Now, based on this, I'll just give you some questions so that you can understand what this spectral line means. Okay. So,
calculate the yes it is just a formula given experimental based on the study they have given this formula calculate the number of spectral lines first one when electron jumps from jumps from ninth excited state to third excited state when the electron jumps from sixth excited state state to third orbit try this to No, it's not. Yes, Pooja, that's right. Ground state is one. First orbit is one. That is not an excited state. so in the first one the value of ni ninth excited state means 10th orbit nf third excited state means fourth orbit just to use the formula ni for sixth excited state is 7 nf third orbit is 3 only because it's third orbit so 7 minus 3 is 10 easy right so all these kind of question understanding of concept is important but once you know the formula i would suggest you can use the formula directly to get the answer okay next write down a spectrum spectrum write down it can be defined as
it can be defined as pictorial representation pictorial representation of arrangement of radiation arrangement of radiation in increasing or decreasing order increasing or decreasing order of wavelength or frequency you are not going to get any questions on this spectrum okay numerical questions you are not going to get but to understand energy levels present within an atom we are just discussing it nothing much okay so a spectrum is classified into two categories first of all the classification of a spectrum if you see it is of two types the one is a spectrum that is based on nature based on nature and other one is based on light based on light okay based on nature we have two types of it has two types of spectrum that is continuous continuous and discrete discrete also we have two types that is band band and line spectrum band and line spectrum based on based on origin i have written here light by mistake it is based on origin so based on origin it is of two types that is emission emission and absorption emission and absorption okay see continuous spectrum is when a white light passes through the prism i'll show you the diagram we all know when white light passes through passes through a prism right we get seven different colors okay that from those colors only the light are made up of the light consists of seven different colors so it dissociates or you know uh, gives seven different color when you get a screen on the other side of the prism so that spectrum okay that spectrum is 
the continuous spectrum we have. Okay, that we call it as continuous spectrum. I'll show you the diagram of this continuous spectrum. None of the wavelength is missing in this one. See this one, the simple one. White light passes through a prism and this spectrum is continuous spectrum. Just a second. Okay, continuous spectrum of it. Discrete means what? Look at this one here. Okay. So if you see this, this is continuous. White light passes through the prism, will get continuous spectrum. Where we are getting 6.5, Anurag? The previous question you are talking about. This, this one, you said, this two. No, we won't get fractional value, no. You are getting 6.5, I am not getting you. You are asking me if we get 6.5 then or any fraction value, yeah. We won't get it, you see, this two will, you'll get cancelled, you'll get a fraction value, you won't get a fraction value here. Fraction value you won't get because we have, suppose, see, logically you can understand. See what happens. The possibility is what, this will be an odd number if it is even, then this will cancel out, 2 and this number. If it is an odd number, then this terms become even because it is plus 1 over here. Yes? Right, so you won't get fractional value here ever, which is also logically correct. Okay, now you look at this spectrum. Like I said, you are not going to get any uh, you know, numerical questions on this. It's just basic understanding you must have for this. Okay, so this is continuous spectrum. All wavelengths are present here on the photographic plane, continuous. Absorption means what? Between this two, prism and this white light, you place a, any, any substance, any gaseous substance, any molecules you place over here, like in this case you see. Then what we observe on this photographic plate 
there are some wavelengths which are missing here. You can see this. Some wavelengths are missing. Okay, if you want me to magnify it, I'll just show you in the next page. You see this. Okay, now you can see this. You put a substance in between the white light and the prism. We see some of the wavelengths are missing here. So this spectrum that we are getting, it is absorption spectrum. Okay, now this one is important here to understand why only few wavelengths are missing and how these wavelengths are missing over here. Where did it go? Because from here, we have all seven wavelengths, right? All colors we have over here because it's white light, correct? Now, this substance and this prism, what happens here and how these wavelengths are missing? What we can conclude from this thing? We can conclude that some of the wavelengths is absorbed by the substance, yes or no? Agreed? some of the wavelengths are absorbed by the substance which is present over here. And when this happens, what happens? We know this fact that within an atom, electrons are present, energy levels are there. So when from the one level, if I you know uh, draw the energy level like this, which is easier for me to draw a straight line, suppose these are the energy levels we have. So if electrons present over here of this substance, and when it absorbs energy, right, it will jump to the higher energy level. Again, another higher energy level. This is what happens. So electron absorbs only those wavelengths corresponding to that energy level present in the molecule. If there is one wavelength, suppose this wavelength, corresponding to this wavelength, we have certain amount of energy. If electron receives that energy, and corresponding to that energy, if the energy level is not present within the atom, then electron won't absorb that particular wavelength at all. It will release those wavelengths. It won't take that particular wavelength. So these wavelengths, you can say corresponding to this, this and this wavelength, the energy level are present, were present in the atom. And hence electron takes those wavelengths, those energy and goes to the higher energy level. So this is spectrum is absorption spectrum. Now, when this experiment was done, okay, they have come to this conclusion. Maybe this is happening that electron takes those energy and goes to the higher energy level to confirm this, what they have done after this, they have taken the same substance and they heat them up. When they heat it, the similar wavelength, same exactly same wavelength emits from this particular substance, which means what? In this experiment, these wavelengths were absorbed by the atom or substance present here. So this is absorption wavelength. When you heat this, all these missing wavelengths we receive over here. So this we call it as emission spectrum. Got it? Now why we are doing this? Because from this experiment only, we came to know about this fact that Within an atom, there are energy level present. Nothing much, you see. The same substance to confirm this that the missing wavelength is absorbed by the substance. To confirm this, we just heat it up. When we heat this, then the same uh, frequency, same wavelength it emits that we receive in this photographic plate again on the screen, which confirms that the missing wavelength is absorbed by the substance. So this becomes absorption and this emitted radiation that we get here, it's called emission spectrum.
we have definite energy levels then only a definite wavelength has been absorbed no why not this wavelength absorbed because corresponding to this wavelength the energy levels was not present why this one absorbed because corresponding to this wavelength the energy level present electron receives this energy and jumps to that particular energy level this confirms the presence of energy level within an atom clear got it line spectrum means a line and bend is not important at all bend spectrum means we'll have a bend of wavelength and these bends are separated by some dark space means a few wavelength is missing over here no more than one wavelength at a time it cannot absorb first of all aditya you see uh, and anishan uh, you see you try to understand one thing <laughs> it's not like we are giving multiple wavelengths to the atom at a time we can provide only one uh, wavelength no suppose white light you are striking it at, right so now we have seven different wavelengths in this white light right so it's not like it will absorb more than one wavelength at a time first it will go it will absorb one particular wavelength goes to the higher energy level if again there is a possibility of absorb of, of absorbing the wavelength then it will absorb the another wavelength again higher energy level so one by one it goes at a time multiple wavelength it cannot absorb and to which orbit it goes and to which orbit it goes it depends upon it depends upon the energy level of those orbits okay so bend means we have a bend of light and it is separated by a thick line dark line line is exactly opposite of it we have a line of wavelength separated by a thick dark space that is the line spectrum no we heat them just to make it sure that the, the the absorbed wavelength the missing wavelength is absorbed by the substance just to have a surety of it see when you heat it many things possible it is also possible that the electron go to the higher energy level but at some temperature for some element they emit radiation also which were missing over there so one of the experiment confirms this actually when we have a bend band of light band of wavelength it is band when we have a single line thin line it is line effect Ah, that's fine, Anurag. That's not an issue. Our purpose is what to understand within an atom there are energy levels. So the query that you are asking, in that case also, it is it is already understood, no, that within an atom there are energy levels present. So we are concerned with energy level. It's not like what what energy it is absorbing and what energy level it is going. It is energy level present. That is it. discrete is uh, you know it based on the nature okay it depends upon uh, uh, you know uh, that is not in our hand it is not uh, we are not doing anything in it from a particular source suppose some light is coming out where the some wavelengths are missing so it can have of two types one single wavelength 
uh, that is line in spectrum and we have more than one wavelength one by one present separated by a thin line no 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 it's not based on nature it is right so we are not doing anything into it got it so point is this thing is not you know it is not that important that we'll discuss so much on it but why i have discussed this because this experiment none of you have asked me sir how do you know within an atom the energy levels were present that is the postulates of bohr's right but he hadn't talk about energy levels he has just given its theory so the that that energy level is present within an atom we got from this experiment absorption and emission so this part is a bit important to understand that how do we get to know that within an atom the energy levels present nothing much required over here they are not going to ask you any questions on this numerical questions specifically or uh, maybe sometimes they can ask you theoretical but that is also not important when we supply energy depending upon the you know energy you are giving in electrons absorbs energy when it absorbs it moves to higher energy level Ah, so more than one electron is fine. We are talking about here. It happens with all the atoms. Now it is not related with Bohr's. Different different electrons in different different orbits will have different different energy. So depending upon those energies plus the energies you are giving in, if corresponding higher energy level present, it will take that energy. Otherwise, it won't take. yeah it, it is one of the possibility that when it comes down right some electrons goes to the higher energy level some comes down when it comes down it emits see what happens one example it is given in ncert also you see iron rod you heat correct what happens it color changes from dull red to bright red bright red to blue and then white it becomes so how this color changes takes place color changes means what change in frequency so when we heat it there will be change in frequency and hence different wavelengths comes out from this theoretically if you try to understand like this that we are giving energy you won't get it maybe but one very simple example we have iron rod you heat it continuously changes its color how do we absorb how do we you know uh, understand the different color over there because the frequency that is coming out from the Uh, iron rod that frequency we receive and then we uh, no uh, then we realize what color it is blue red or no white whatever it is correct so this example confirms that on heating different different frequency of light comes out from a metal surface that is what happens here also when you heat it different frequency comes out corresponding to that different wavelengths and those wavelengths if you compare here the same wavelengths were missing over here it means these wavelengths which are missing is absorbed by this substance and hence energy levels i think you understood it now clear okay have we discussed about time period orbital frequency time period or orbital frequency okay it was there in bohr's model only this one formula i forgot to discuss there i'll just give you now see there is a term sometimes they'll ask you like radius and velocity relation we have with r and z similarly we have relation of time period of revolution uh it's not a uh, no that difficult time period of revolution write it down okay 
So time period for nth orbit, we write it as 2 pi r n, the radius of that orbit, divided by the velocity v n. r n v n you substitute, you will get the relation as n cube by z square into 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 16 second. This constant term is not required. You should know this relation that the relation of time period is directly proportional to n cube by z square. Sometimes they'll ask you to compare the time period in two different orbits also. So you should know this relation. Similarly, one more term we have that is orbital frequency. Not orbit, it is electron, velocity of electron. It's not orbit. Time period of revolution means for revolution of electron. So orbital frequency is what? It is the velocity divided by circumference. Circumference. So velocity is V and circumference is 2 pi Rn. You see it is exactly opposite of it. So this if you solve, you will get this the formula as z square by n cube into 6.66 10 to the power 15. Okay. And orbital frequency, it is directly proportional to orbital frequency. It is directly proportional to z square by n cube. Okay, and this is, you see, it is number of revolution per second. Second inverse. This two formula you also remember. Done? Okay. So, We know the relation of wave number that is 1 by lambda is equals to rh z square 1 by ni square minus 1 by nf square. This is the relation we have. Okay. Now, in different different transition, we can easily understand or find out the wavelength required. Let me draw this, uh, you know, diagram. Write down the heading in this. Interpretation of hydrogen spectrum. Interpretation of hydrogen 
spectrum hydrogen spectrum okay interpretation of hydrogen spectrum so uh, suppose we have different different energy levels present here all of you draw this these are the different different energy levels okay n is equals to 1 it is n is equals to 2 n is equals to 3 n is equals to 4 5 6 7 now when electron comes from high to low energy level like this one it will it radiates energy right like from here to here if you comes it radiates energy radiates energy and this also radiates energy okay similarly it is possible when it comes down to the second energy level which is like this this is a transition we have okay now you see in all these transition there are energies comes out in the form of radiation yes or no guys tell me in all these transitions energies comes out yes so from 5 to 1 you'll get one particular wavelength 4 to 1 you'll get one particular wavelength 3 to 1 2 to 1 you'll get different different wavelengths okay so basically when the transition takes place from any higher energy orbit to the first orbit you will have one series of wavelength yes or no guys respond fast right are there are see anurag there are infinite number of orbits correct i cannot show you infinite number of transition i am just giving you one sample of it correct if you want me to draw i'll draw it okay don't i'll do it like this way. okay don't get angry anurag okay <laughs> no no not in this way. i was just joking so this is the point there are infinite number of orbits no so we can draw we can draw infinite number of lines there are many lines like this possible correct fine so point i am trying to make is what in all these transition where one of the you know orbit is fixed the final orbit is fixed no for one particular transition the final orbit is n is equals to 1 for one particular transition the final orbit is n is equals to 2 then 3 and then 4 5 and all right like, like this we have transitions correct so in all these transition when final orbit is 1 2 3 4 5 you will get a series of wavelength you will get a range of it right so obviously we'll have lambda max also in that range and lambda minimum also agreed maximum wavelength and minimum wavelength for one particular transition will get correct now you see this 
when electron jumps to the first orbit from any higher energy orbit if it comes from the first to the first orbit the series of wavelength that you get here this we call it as that it falls in lyman series lyman series it is the name of the scientist and on the name on his name only it's given this series similarly when electron comes to the second orbit again we will get a series of wavelength bomber series then bastion series then bracket series then fund series further also we have humphrey also we have after this but that is not required all these will get different different series of it so could you tell me for lyman series what is the nf value for bomber what is nf value is it fixed is it fixed is it fixed yes it is fixed for lymer nf is always 1 fixed bomber nf is always 2 fixed similarly we have pastel bracket and fund but what is ni ni could be anything for lyman series if you see ni could be anything from 2 to infinity yes or no and for bomber ni could be anything from 3 to infinity for pastel could be anything from 4 to infinity so ni value for all these series are not fixed nf value is fixed correct so what we are going to do next ni and nf value we have you see this ni and nf value we have this is constant only yes 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 correct ashwath ni and nf we have this is constant only so we can find out the range of wavelength for each series yes or no so let us discuss first lyman series now you tell me the nf value is 1 here ni value could be anything from 2 3 4 5 till infinity 1 by lambda is equals to i'll write down r for any other atom 1 by ni square Minus one by n f square. Based on the value of n i, because n f is the fixed, n i you can change any value you can take. So based on the value of n i, could you tell me the possible value of lambda x in terms of r? R you don't have to substitute. And lambda minimum in terms of r. Could you find out this too?
lambda can't be negative stress why you are getting negative sign done this one okay now you see whatever i am going to discuss now for lyman series like how to identify the value of uh, you know nf and ni sorry ni in order to get the maximum and minimum wavelength this thing is valid for all the series bummer pascher bracket fun all the series okay you see nf is things we just need to think about think for ni only Oh, I have written it uh, by mistake. I have written this ni here. It should be nf. No. That's why probably you are getting negative. Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay. Ni value could be anything from two to infinity. Now you see. you we have, suppose we have to get the maximum wavelength correct we'll start from this side if lambda is maximum right if lambda is maximum can we say 1 by lambda is minimum in that case yes for maximum wavelength 1 by lambda is minimum yes 1 by lambda is minimum means this entire expression should be minimum to make this minimum we have to subtract the maximum value here means 1 by ni should be maximum 1 i ni will be maximum when ni will be minimum hence the possible value of ni is what 2 right so what we can say here see for 1 by if you take lambda max here it means lambda so if i take maximum wavelength it means 1 by lambda is minimum and for if this is minimum this entire thing is minimum this entire thing is minimum it means 1 by ni ni should be maximum then only it will be minimum and this would be maximum when ni is minimum is minimum so what we can conclude for maximum wavelength this you can you know apply for all other different series for lambda max ni should be minimum and reverse of this is also true for lambda minimum ni should be maximum okay just you need to keep this in mind maximum wavelength we need to find out so ni value is minimum that is 2 so we can calculate this by this formula and that is 1 by lambda max is equals to r 1 by 1 square minus 1 by 2 square so when you solve this you'll get lambda max is equals to is equals to 4 r by 3 and similarly lambda minimum if you calculate it would be i'll just write down here it is r 1 by so oh, the r will be in the denominator so 4 by 3 r here 
okay 4 by 3 r and this would be 1 by r so 1 by lambda max is 4 by 3 r for lyman series and 1 by r is the lambda minimum so lambda falls in this range for lyman series 4 by 3 r and 1 by r so when you substitute the value of r because r is a constant only so we'll get the range of wavelength over here you don't have to substitute it and this range is found to be in just a second this is found to be in ultraviolet region this is what you need to memorize ultraviolet region so the Lyman series falls in ultraviolet region. Correct. Similarly, you can find out for Balmer series. Could you tell me what is the lambda max and lambda minimum for Balmer series? Bama series and F is 2 that is fixed and Ni could be anything from 3, 4, 5 till infinity. What is the lambda max here and lambda minimum here? Again, maximum wavelength you need to find out. Ni value should be minimum. Minimum wavelength, Ni value should be maximum. Okay, lambda max for Balmer is 36 by 5 R and minimum value is 4 by R. So this lambda falls in this range. And this is found to be in visible region. This is only in visible region. Okay, similarly for other three, you can easily find out. I'm not going to do it again and again. I just write it down here. The reason that you get Lyman, you'll get ultraviolet UV reason. Balmer, you'll get visible reason. Bastion, bracket and fund, you'll get infrared. 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 And infrared. All these things to write down. If they ask any question, you can use that formula of 1 by lambda and you can find out the you know, possible value. Done. Okay. So now we are done with it. For any other series, passion bracket fund, you know, NI, NF value, you can find out. 
lambda max lambda minimum is okay now the next we are going to understand here is the dual nature of light dual nature of matter this we also call it as de broglie de broglie hypothesis okay write down in 1924 obviously the date here is not required here in 1924 the scientist name is d brogi d brogi proposed that proposed that the proposed that all microscopic material propose that all microscopic all microscopic material particle microscopic material particle in motion such as electron electron protons atoms ions all microscopic material particle in motion such as electron proton atom ions and molecules has has dual character dual character means wave plus particle nature molecules has dual character that is wave nature plus particle nature so what he suggest write down according to him according to de broglie yes correct this is correct write down according to de broglie according to de broglie according to de broglie the wavelength associated with a particle okay according to de broglie the wavelength associated with a particle of mass m moving with a velocity v is given by again i am repeating the wavelength associated with a particle of mass m moving with the velocity v is given by lambda is equals to h by p p is the momentum which is given as h by m dot p p is what p is the momentum So now this wavelength is associated with any object of mass m moving with a velocity v okay according to einstein's energy equation we know any mass m if moving with the speed of light that is c 
the energy associated with an object is mc square okay mc square this is for light for any other object we can write down this uh velocity c as the velocity v okay so this is the wavelength given by de broglie how do we get this this i am trying to make you understand this one right this one is fine you let it be now how do we get this we are trying to understand so e is equals to mc square we have from uh, einstein's mass energy equation mass energy equation and we also know for a photon the energy is e is equals to h nu which further we can write it as h c by lambda so now e is equals to what mc square e is equals to h c by lambda if you equate the two we will get mc square is equals to h c by lambda and when you solve this for lambda you will get lambda is equals to h by m c this is for the light particle but for any object of mass m we can write lambda is equals to h by m times the velocity of the object this is de broglie hypothesis which is given by uh with no you know which is given by the help of einstein's mass energy equation plus planck's quantum theory so this is the dual nature of light just little bit only this much not more than that this is it over here quantum mechanics there are many things in this we are just taking a bit of reference of that that is it. done so wavelength lambda of any object of mass m moving with a velocity v is lambda is equals to h by mv we can write okay so from this you can easily uh, you know see that wavelength is directly proportional inversely proportional to the mass m and for heavier object hence for heavier object the wavelength is insignificant is insignificant and we ignore this but for microscopic particles like electron proton neutron electron mass you know it is in the order of 10 to the power minus 31 so mass is very small so there the wavelength is significant we cannot ignore that so for electrons we have to consider wave as well as the particle nature right wave as well as the particle nature nothing velocity can be anything no mass we cannot change for an object velocity we can increase or decrease but main thing is mass and it is it is so heavy that this lambda is insignificant yeah it was given for uh, any object uh, like for the light particles but the same thing we can we are using over here no we cannot say that we can say see even for us also the mass is 70 75 60 kg for human being right the wavelengths we don't we don't consider the wave particle for us right we don't consider that because 60 70 kg is too much for this wavelength so it is almost negligible zero theoretically we can say but practically we don't have correct now this is the a formula we have we can also write down the various you know form of this particular formula 
like in terms of kinetic energy suppose if k is the kinetic energy we have is the kinetic energy so k is equals to we can write half mv square so could you tell me what is the value of mv from this what is the value of mv from this no from this one there's no lambda in this expression Okay, and we you need to find out. So what we can do in this, we can multiply with m both sides. So it is two m k is equals to m square v square. So if you find out m v from this, it will be root under of two m k, and this we can substitute here. So the formula of lambda in terms of wavelength is 2 mk root over of in terms of kinetic energy is this k is the kinetic energy here must take care of it another formula okay now one last one in this you see if a charge q is moving with sorry is moving under moving under a potential difference v then its kinetic energy is q into v v is the potential difference this k we can substitute here So further than formula of lambda is h by two m q v root over of it. So no, how did you get the kinetic energy? What? this you will study in electrostatic kinetic energy of charge you will study in electro electrostatic you can take this as a formula now in 12th grade you will study electrostatic in physics there you can understand this but as for now you can consider this as a formula kinetic energy of charge q and the potential difference v is q Uh, sir yes so what if the particle accelerates 
nothing then only the kinetic energy will be q times into v like if it is acceleration then their velocity will be something else we are not dealing with the velocity here it just q charge under a potential difference v q v is the kinetic energy Done. Just a second. Okay, so these are the formula you can use. Okay, that's yes, not an issue. So these are the three formulas we have. Depending upon the data given you in the question, you can use this formula in order to find out the wavelength lambda. Okay, now with this, you can actually understand one of the postulates of Bohr atomic model. Like you see, Bode, what he suggests that the electron revolves in a circular path called orbit like this. Called orbit, right? And de Broglie, de Broglie suggests that any moving particle has, has you no know, wave nature associated with it. Any moving particle has wave nature. So these are the suppose wave associated with an electron moving in a circular path of radius r like this suppose this is the wave we have okay and what we are assuming in this circular path the electron is moving and these are the wave associated with this electron okay we are assuming n number of waves assume in one complete rotation there are n number of waves. So what is wave you see here? This is from this point to this point. So could you tell me the distance this point? What is this distance? This is one complete wave. So this distance is lambda. Similarly, from this point to this point, what it is? The another wavelength, lambda. Like this, we have n number of wave associated here in one complete rotation, correct? So, so could we write down the circumference of this orbit is equals to n times lambda? Is it clear? Because n waves create lambda, 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 n times n lambda is the circumference. Okay. Circumference, we also know it is 2 pi r, where r is the radius of this orbit, n lambda. From de Broglie hypothesis, we can write lambda is equals to h by mv. So when you rearrange this, you'll get mvr is equals to n h by what is this relation? What is this relation? Could you tell me? This is one of the postulates of board. If you remember. Yeah, the postulates of board, right? So board has given this relation according to his experiment. There's no mathematical proof for this. But after de Broglie hypothesis, we got the proof of this particular relation. 
And then we understood that how accurate the postulates of Bohr was. Okay. Right, there are one or two. Yes, because we have n number of waves here. Arirat. We are assuming n number of waves in that orbit, no? So, wavelength into n is the circumference. Correct? Yes, Harry, tell me. Did you get it? Okay. Now, there are a few limitations of board model also. This one, a T Broggy uh, hypothesis also. First of all, it is applied only to moving objects, not for stationary objects where the velocity is zero. Right. This is one thing. Another thing for macroscopic uh, objects, like day to day life, the objects that we use. Okay. For those particles also, those objects also, it is not applic applicable. Why the same reason? The mass is very high and hence the lambda is insignificant there. You can ignore that. So these two are the... These two are the, uh, you know, drawbacks of de Broglie hypothesis. Well, now, one very important thing, you listen to me carefully when right here. Now, after this de Broglie hypothesis, we came to know that the electron has both wave and particle nature, right? Electron has both wave nature and particle nature. It consists of dual nature, wave and particle nature, dual nature we call it as, correct? Wave and particle nature. Okay. So because of this, what happens? The exact position of electron is very difficult to identify. Okay, the exact position is very difficult to identify. And this comes here, the problems with the board model. Okay, so just here you see what happens. Suppose the electron is revolving in this, uh, you know, orbit. Correct, suppose the electron is revolving in this orbit. Okay, obviously it is a circular orbit. I have given like this, but it is so, suppose a circular orbit we have. Electron is revolving in this orbit, correct? Now suppose you need to find out the position of the electron which is revolving in this orbit. So for this purpose, what we do, we use a very low frequency, or sorry, high frequency of light, high energy light. That light we strikes onto this electron Okay, high frequency light we use, which strikes onto this electron, right? And when it reflects back, right, there is a receiver this side we keep. And that is nothing but a microscope, which we use to, you know, detect the reflecting light. And then we can find out the position of the electron. Suppose this is the microscope we have. This is what we do. Right. So since we are using this light, suppose H nu, the frequency you are using, you provide energy to this electron. This energy, if it emits, so we'll get it and we'll find out the position of it. Right. But what happens here, you are providing energy. It reflects back, you get this and you understand, okay, the position of electron is this, that you can do. But at the same time, what happens? The moment it receives energy, right, some part of it, it receives energy, this will change its position so quickly, right? The new path of the, you know, the electron moves in this direction because it gains energy, it moves in this direction. Means the position of the electron has been changed. By the time you receive this, uh, you know, signal, receive this radi uh, reflected ray, this side, by that time, the electron has already changed its position. Right, means the moment you receive here, the electron is not present here. It has gone to some, some, some other point, some other place. Right, so what happens here, 
after this, we came to this conclusion that the exact position and momentum means the velocity of electron. The exact position and momentum of an electron is is difficult to is difficult to measure simultaneously. If you try to measure po position, its velocity will be changed. Momentum will be changed. If you try to measure momentum, its position will be changed. So the exact position and momentum of an electron is difficult to measure simultaneously, right? And this particular thing is given by a scientist called Heisenberg, right? And this rule, we call it as Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Write down the principle Yeah, I'll repeat. Just I'll, first you write down, I'll repeat the line. Okay. Write down according to Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Okay. According to Heisenberg uncertainty principle, it is impossible to measure. Okay, it is impossible to measure the exact position and exact momentum, the exact position and exact momentum of a moving microscopic particles like electron. Of a moving of a moving microscopic particles like electron. So what he suggests that exact position and momentum is difficult to find out simultaneously. Okay. So he has given its relation, which we call it as mathematical expression of Heisenberg based on his study. He said delta X into delta P is greater or equal to H by four pi. Where I'll explain this first to you. Finish this, write it down. Delta X is uncertainty in position. In position. And Delta P is uncertainty in momentum. Right, this we can write it as delta P is the momentum m into v. Mass of an object is constant only. So m delta v, we can write the uncertainty in momentum. Where delta v is what? Delta v is the uncertainty in velocity. So if you substitute this delta P here, we'll get the another form in terms of velocity delta x into delta v is greater or equal to h by 4 pi m right this is the relation we get here copy down this first then we'll see some more things into this one Done? Ah, wait, 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 Anurag, we'll do it. Okay. 
Now, in this, the point you write down the explanation you write down here. I'll explain this, write down. For determining the position of, for determining the position of for determining the position of microscopic particles microscopic particles just we'll finish this and then we'll get well then we'll have a break just this is the last thing this explanation will finish and we'll take a break okay position of microscopic particles radiations of high energy or high frequency radiation of high energy or high frequency has to be used has to be used when these radiation falls on the object whose position is to be found when these radiation falls on the object whose position to be found on the object whose position to be found the whole momentum or energy gets transferred to the particle the whole momentum or energy gets transferred to the particle which causes inaccuracy in velocity right so that is what i have explained over here velocity in accuracy in velocity means momentum also right because m delta v is the momentum when you use this high frequency radiations in order to find out the position of this electron right then electron was moving in this orbit right this was the expected path this was the expected path for the electron right moving in this path you provide this energy and the reflected radiation is this you receive this and you can find out the position of an electron but what happens since you provides energy to this electron so it will change its path right so it was not there on that same position the moment you take this or receive this radiation from this okay so the energy transfer takes place that changes the velocity of the electron here from here to here the electron has some velocity now you use radiation to find out the position but in this way you have changed the energy of the electron right it takes the energy and it its path will change right it comes out of the orbit this is the new path of the electron you can say new path of the electron this was the expected path expected path okay so this is what this is what heisenberg said that you cannot find out the exact position and exact momentum of the electron simultaneously right means if you find out position momentum you cannot find out if you find out momentum then the position will be changed so both you cannot find out at the same time simultaneously and he has given its own relation of uncertainty in position and momentum should follow this relation this is the heisenberg uncertainty principle yes it absorbs energy changes its path and hence its velocity also changes okay
No, it is not important to find out. They just said, we are trying to understand the various properties and characteristics of it. Okay. So he just said, okay, at the same time, we cannot find out of this. But the problem with this, what happens, you see, earlier boards were saying what? That we know the exact position of electron. We know if the energy is this, it means the electron is in this orbit. And in this orbit, the velocity is this, right? And its potential energy is this, kinetic energy is this, right? Position is this, at this distance, it is present. So once we know the electron is present in one particular orbit, according to Bohr, we can find out the, you know, the velocity of the electron in that orbit. Plus position also we know, it is in this orbit, at this distance from the radius. So this, when this comes out, then there is a problem with the Bohr's theory. No, we are not going to see, we are not going to determine the position of electron, not required. We are just trying to understand that one of the postulates Bohr's was given was inaccurate. According to him, we know the exact position and velocity of an electron, right? In an orbit. Exact position means what? Whether it is present first orbit, second orbit or 10th orbit. We know the position where in which orbit it is present. And in that particular orbit, what is the velocity of an electron? But according to Heisenberg, it is not possible, right? It is not possible to determine the two particular points simultaneously. Okay, simultaneously. No, it's not. It's still, you know, it's still, if you go for higher study or some research, if you want to do into this, it's still the many things, many research are going on. It is not, you know, done yet. And even we are, Understanding this in a simpler language, it is not exactly the way we are doing it. Because if you go into the actual concept, actual thing, you won't be able to get it now. That's why this chapter is very difficult to study at this level when we are starting our course in this 11th grade. But yes, it is not required at all. Okay, so just let it be. Point I'm trying to make is what from this principle we come to know about this fact that exact position and exact momentum exact velocity of an electron of a microscopic particle where the wave nature is significant, right? Or the particle which has dual nature, wave plus particle nature, right? For those kind of elements, objects, it is very difficult to find out. It is difficult to find out the exact position and exact momentum simultaneously. If you find one, other one you won't get. If you find delta P, delta X, you won't get accurately. There will be some uncertainty into that. So he has given its relation of uncertainty, which is this into this delta X by four pi. This is in terms of momentum and this is in terms of velocity, right? The relation is this. Okay. So this is it. We'll take a break now, right? So we will resume the session at six, uh, 45, any time between 40 to 45 will start. Okay, 43, 643 will start. Take a break now.
Hello guys, can you hear me? Okay, so we have discussed Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Okay, so uh, so we have discussed that the exact position and uh, momentum or velocity of an electron is difficult to find out simultaneously. Okay, so since exact position and momentum we cannot find out sim, uh, you know simultaneously. So after this, when this principle came into the existence, we we started looking for the small reason or volume. Where the position, where the probability of finding an electron is maximum. Okay, so before this, it was an orbit where the electron was present. Now it is the small reason or volume where the probability. So the certainty there that the electron is present in the orbit. Now it converts into a probability. Okay, that the probability of finding an electron within a small reason that we started looking for that's suppose in this orbit maybe the electron is not present okay maybe here it is not present the exact position we did not find out but we can say there is a small reason in which the probability of finding an electron is maximum not exactly the path a position but a small volume we can say where the probability of finding an electron is maximum right so certainty is here it now it converts into the probability okay earlier it was certain that electron is present in an orbit so this small reason or volume where the probability of finding an electron is maximum is now called as is known as orbital right this small reason or volume where the probability of finding an electron is max maximum is known as orbital so from here the concept of orbit has been changed and it becomes orbital this orbital may be circular maybe like you know spherical or non spherical spherical or non spherical if you look at the orbit the orbit initially it was mentioned that it is always a circular path it is always a circular path but it may be you know circular or spherical or may not be spherical can be anything so what is what are orbits sorry orbitals different types of orbital that we have we'll discuss that later not now means first we'll see some questions based on this whatever topics we have discussed today and then after finishing those numericals we'll see orbitals right different types of orbitals that we have correct now you see this question Mm. Yes, this two question is all. have you done this okay fine then you do this one question number 55 
डन क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी फाइव One electron volt is equals to one point six into ten to the power minus nineteen joule. I have already given you all these things. If you do not remember, you cannot. You won't be able to solve the question. No, not all. Uh, you need to do question number fifty-five. Question number fifty-seven. Question number fifty-eight. Fifty-nine and sixty. Only fifty-six. You don't have to do. So question number fifty-five, you see, the difference between the incident energy and threshold energy is given. So we know H nu in is equals to H nu naught plus Ke max. Okay, so this Ke max we can find out. It is H nu in minus H nu naught, and that value is given five electron volt. That is five into one point six into ten to the power minus nineteen joule, right? We need to find out the de Broglie wavelength of the electron. So we know half m v square is given. Oh, sorry, kinetic energy is given, right? So we know de Broglie wavelength in terms of kinetic energy is what h by two m k root under of it. substitute all the values you'll get the answer electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kinetic energy is 5 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule just you need to solve this you'll get the answer so answer for this the 55th one is approximately this b that is 6.6 into 10 to the power Minus nine divided by root over of one forty five point six meter. Okay, fifty seventh one. What is the answer? Alpha particle has maximum mass. Right, fifty seventh one. You see, the mass of alpha particle is maximum. It is uh, for you know first we have minimum is for electron. then we have for proton and then we have for alpha particle okay so maximum mass and hence the minimum wavelength wavelength of alpha is minimum then we have wavelength of proton then we have wavelength of electron so answer for this one is option c here this one is b because we know 
lambda and mass are inversely proportional de broglie moment right electron of mass m question number 58 electron of mass m and charge e is accelerated from the rest through a potential difference b the kinetic energy we know kinetic energy for the electron is what if accelerated along a potential difference v then it is e times into v answer is option b 58th one 59 what is the answer for 59 the uncertainty in position of an electron is zero the uncertainty in momentum right that would be infinity right option d is correct 60th one the electron is moving in a kinetic energy of this what will be the de broglie wavelength of this electron so we know the formula lambda is equals to h by 2 mk root under of it you will substitute all the values you will get the answer uncertainty in position delta x is zero correct delta x is zero so it will be something by zero is infinity no that's why it is it becomes infinite Okay, hence we cannot find out it simultaneously. Any number divided by zero is infinity. That is what's given in the option. Zero by zero is undefined. Okay. What is the answer? Question number sixty six zero. Yes, yes, correct. One by zero is infinity. Zero by zero is undefined. Sixty is B, correct? Yeah, it's B. Okay. Sixty-six to sixty-nine.
finish all the question and then you can answer Done? I got only two, two responses till now. Okay. The deep Broggy wavelength, question number 66, you see. The deep Broggy wavelength of 1 milligram of a cyan blown. Okay, so lambda is equals to H by MV. 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 divided by mass is 1 milligram, so 10 to the power minus 6 kg into 20 meter per second. Okay, so it would be 10 to the minus 5, 29, 3.3. Option A, right? 3.3 into 10 to the power minus 29 meter. Option A is correct. 67. Uncertainty in position and momentum are equal. So what is given? Delta X equals to delta P velocity we need to find out correct that is equals to m delta v so we know delta x into delta v is equals to h by 4 pi m delta v we need to find out so delta v divided by m into delta x delta v is equals to h by 4 pi m m m gets cancelled because delta x is m delta v so delta V is equals to H by pi root over of it into 1 by 2.
Clear? Answer is option D. None of this is wrong. Uh, correct. Okay. A, B, C. All are wrong. So, 68th one. Calculate the wavelength of a track. Start running this meter dash. In second, weight is this. Okay, so lambda is equals to 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 divided by mass is given 50 into the velocity is 150 meter divided by 12.1 meter per second. So when you solve this, the answer would be 1.06 approximately 1.06 into 10 to the power minus 36 meter. Okay, this is the answer we get. For this also, none of this is correct. Option D. Sixty-nine. The uncertainty in location of a circulating electron is equal to its de Broglie wavelength. Okay, so delta x is uncertainty in location or position is equals to lambda. It is given. The minimum percentage error of velocity under this circumstances. Okay, percentage error in velocity. So we need to find out delta v by v into hundred. This is what we need to find out. Okay, so what we can write. Delta X into Delta V is equals to H by 4 pi M. Okay. Delta X equals to Lambda is equals to H by MV. H by MV we can substitute here. So H by M Delta V by V H by 4 pi m. This gets cancelled and hence the percentage error into 100 is equals to equals to 1 by 4 into 22 into 7 into 100. So 88, 100 by 88 is 1 point something. So you will get uh, approximately 8%. 69, what is the answer? See, 100 by 88 is more than one, a bit more than one, right? Seven into a number which is more than one. The closest option is B, that is approximately 80. Yeah, so closest option is A. You don't have to solve it. Okay. Okay, this one also. Not all the questions you need to do. Question number 47, you do it first. Huh, that way also you can do, Aditya, not an issue. Correct. You are getting A, 67. What is the answer for 67? Oh, okay, fine. Huh? You solve question number 47. Uh, sir. Just a second. Question number 48. Question number 50.
then 51, 52, 53. 51 and 53. 52, 53 we have calculation. Yes, tell me. Which one? Twelve. No, 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 no. You try, you'll get it. You don't have to find out the minimum or maximum into this. Just a second, guys. Let me just go back. What did you do, Aditya? Uh, sir, I wrote uh, delta x as uh, m delta v and uh, p as m delta v as well. Just a second. You will get only one answer. Let me check this. Answer the position and momentum. Delta x equals to m delta v is given. Na? So, it's fine only. Delta X is M Delta V. Achha, uncertainty in position and momentum are given. Uncertainty in position and momentum are equal. So Delta X equals to M Delta V. Then it should be M Delta V here. No? Oh, I think then it ends P now. I have substituted wrong. Delta X is M delta V. So we'll get here M into delta V square H by 4 pi M. Correct? Yes. So if you find out delta V here, it will be 1 by 2 M root under of H by pi. You get it B, not D here. Yeah. Position is delta x, momentum is m delta v. Yeah, that's correct. B only you will get. This is a calculation mistake. Try this.
Dan Okay, let's do this. So the first one, 47. Which transition in hydrogen spectrum have the same wavelength as Baumol transition is this? So we know one by lambda is equals to R H Z square. For helium, it is two square. One by NF square or, or one by NI square. NF square minus one by NI square. So this would be RH into four. 1 by NF square is 4, 2 square. NI square is 4 square. Correct? This would be RH 1 by 1 square we can write minus 1 by 2 square we can write. You see, if it is hydrogen, then this would be 1 square here we can write. So it is for hydrogen, NF value is 1 we are getting here if you compare this. And NI value is 2 we are getting. So option A, no doubt. This kind of uh, question, it is very difficult to solve this for NF and NI. So better you write down the expression and compare with. If you write down the expression for hydrogen spectrum, you will get this only one by lambda RH into one by NI, NF square minus one by NI square. That's what the expression we have here, hence the answer. 48. The number of spectral lines that can be possible when electrons in sixth cell in hydrogen atom return to second cell. So Ni is 6 and Nf is 2. So answer would be 6 minus 2 minus 6 minus 2 plus 1 divided by 2. So 2 into 5 that would be 10. No doubt. Question number 50. The ratio between longest wavelength of hydrogen atom in Lyman series. What is the longest wavelength? Could you tell me? Lambda max. I have already done this in the class. Lambda max. Four by three are I guess, right? Yes. Four by three. You don't have to memorize it. And shortest wavelength in Baumol series. Lambda minimum. What is that? Lambda minimum in Baumol series. One by R. So this ratio, if you find out, it would be four by three, the answer is. Correct? So the ratio is four by three. Is it four by R? Just let me check. So lambda max for Lyman is uh, is four by three r, and lambda minimum is four by r. It's not four. It's not one by r. It's four by r. So if you take the ratio here, it would be four by three r is to four by r. So that would be one is to three. Achha, it is given for he plus. Okay, it is given for he plus. So you need to take here. Z is square, correct? Okay, not an issue. So you need to take here Z is square here. So for hydrogen, sorry. Okay, hydrogen. So it is one is square here and here it will be two is square. That is what the change we have. Just a second. It will be in the denominator because lambda we are taking 1 by square and 1 by 2 square. 
So answer is four by three we are getting. Correct. One is for hydrogen, and one is for helium. So Z square will come in the denominator. Correct. No doubt. Yes. Fifty-one. The wave number of a spectral line. This is given. Energy. So what is given? One by lambda is given. We need to find out e. Five into ten to the power five. So e is equals to what? H c by lambda. H c into five into ten to the power five. H value is six point six ten to the power minus thirty four. C is three into ten to the power eight. Five into ten to the power five. Okay, so five into three is fifteen. Fifteen into six is uh, nine. Nine point something. You'll get ninety. So approximate value is nine point nine three ten to the power minus twenty three. See one thing: this kind of expression you don't solve it, okay? Because you see, look at the option. One option is quite far from this too, right? And when you see this, suppose it is six, five into three is fifty, fifteen one five, fifteen into six is ninety, but it is more than six, so answer would be more than nine point, more than nine over here. So nine point something here. The closest option is this. B is the correct one. Fifty-three. A photon of wavelength three hundred nanometer. Ha! Huh, one more thing, guys. I I would like you to memorize the value of H C in electron volt. Okay, the value of H C in electron. I'm sorry, H C in electron volt is twelve forty two. Twelve forty-two electron volt. So in electron volt, you can put this value directly. H into C. Okay, you must remember this. Okay. Question number fifty-three: A photon of wavelength three hundred nanometer absorbed by a gas and then emitted two photons. One photon is red, a wavelength this, the wave number of the second photon. What is the answer? Fifty-three. A photon of wavelength three hundred nanometer is absorbed by a gas. Okay. See. This one, the energy that is absorbed, that is incident energy, E incident is equals to what? Corresponding to this wavelength, the energy is being absorbed, and then emitted two photons. Correct. So the energy of the two photon, we can assume E one and E two. So this is the equation we have because total energy in is equals to total energy out. Oh, oh we have done this. Right, so we'll, uh, I'll just do this quickly. So it is H C by lambda is equals to H C by lambda one plus H C by lambda two. Further, we can write one by lambda is equals to one by lambda one plus one by lambda two. Lambda and lambda one is given. You can find out lambda two from this expression. The answer would be you will get uh, option. Option A. Are you getting option A? Yes. Correct. Option A is correct for this one. One important property you can you know you can keep that in mind here. One by lambda is what? One by lambda is wave number. You see, this wave number is additive in nature. additive in nature right it's very important suppose we have
like suppose we have an atom which absorbs a wavelength of lambda we have electrons present here and this one suppose it is bombarded with a wavelength right or frequency lambda on this atom if the photons or electrons comes out from this which obviously have certain wavelength then we cannot write that lambda incident is equals to the two wavelength that comes out from this it is not correct because lambda is not additive we cannot add the lambda like this but wave number is additive we can write 1 by lambda in is equals to 1 by lambda 1 plus 1 by lambda 2 okay wave number is additive this is correct frequency is also additive we can also write nu in is equals to nu 1 plus nu 2 this is also additive correct so this two property you must remember okay wave number and frequency is additive in nature wavelength is non additive you will get one questions on this okay it's, it's it is asked in jee also right this property you must remember theoretical questions you may also get from this wavelength is non additive but wave number and frequency is additive in nature correct understood right okay so okay sir okay guys so we'll wind up over here right next class we'll start with schrodinger wave equation schrodinger wave you don't have to do it in detail okay because it is beyond our syllabus we'll just try to understand the orbital concept from this and then few rules we have different orbitals quantum numbers nodal plane that is it for this chapter okay so most probably next class we'll finish this chapter i'll share the assignment with you dpps okay and the solution dpp i have shared the same dpp contains the solution of all the dpps i am going to share for this particular topic okay so please refer that solution pdf for any query okay guys understood yeah thank you thank you so much take care bye bye